So here we are again, taking a moment to do a temperature check. How you feeling, how I'm feeling, how you thinking, how I'm thinking, uh, as we continue on this wonderful, wonderful journey in Africa. However, it's much more than that. It's much more than just Africa, I like to think. <clears throat> so let's dig in. What, 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 what we thinking, what we feeling. Well, let's begin with you today. Go we'll start with me. Yes. All today right. With the, it's the month, holy month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Ramadan Mubarak. <laughs> Ramadan Kareem. To all of those that are celebrating and observing this month. Um, but for you, <clears throat> this is our first Ramadan in Kenya. Hmm. As we're living here. Living in Kenya. Yes. Yeah. And <clears throat> every, every time, every year, it's always, well, for me, when I was able to do it completely, it was a particular focus in my mind of what I was hoping to achieve, what type of connection I was trying to connect with, or what mm. type of um, <clears throat> goals I, I was putting in place, mm. um, whether it was spiritual goals or any maybe physical or emotional type of goals. Um, but when you're here, away from your Uma, and, and how are you adjusting to Observing Ramadan in Kenya, are there any goals for you or that you're focusing on for the, the future of expats? So, or like, well, as always, I'm always, I'm always excited during the time of Ramadan. I always look forward to Ramadan. Uh, it, for me, it's a reset. It's almost like you know a new year. It's like the new year. Like people have New Year, mm -hmm. New Year's. When New Year comes, for me, this is like the real New Year. Um, even when it comes to like birthday, it's like spiritually. It's like okay, I've reached another year to observe Ramadan. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm excited about it. Always excited about it. it. Gives me a moment and a time to be able to actually, you know, reflect analyze, examine, self-correct, and hopefully to advance. First and foremost, to advance spiritually, mentally. And I think this year my focus is all of that, but I think I'm looking to also advance in other, in other ways as it relates to lifestyle, you know, income, finance, all of those things there. But the root of it definitely is always spiritual and mental. Being in Kenya, observing Ramadan, it could be anywhere really truthfully. I'm going to still feel the same. Nonetheless, it is a bit different, you know, even when in, in Rwanda, you still felt the same as far as the difference is the Uma, as you say, our community. Our brotherhood, my brotherhood, sisterhood, uh, back in the States. As I look on Facebook and all the social media and I, I see people that I know. And this year I think it was a, it was even a little more of a hit because it's right after Savior's Day. Mm. <laughs> and so they keep that energy. They still maintain mm -hmm. that same high energy. Miss Savior's Day again because, of course, we're here in Africa. And so, still feel that sting a little bit, not in a bad way, because I'm, I'm, I, I love the fact that the believers in, in, in the States are high energy and having a great, great time and, you know, riding this, this wave of good, positive energy and high spirituality. <clears throat> I love it. I love it. So, it comes really, again, it seems things have been coming a bit full circle for me. <clears throat> Because as we're moving toward Ramadan, you know, I've been having this, uh, I guess, spiritual refreshment <clears throat> and enlightenment and understanding as it relates to us being here 
uh, in Africa on our journey. <clears throat> and I love being here, especially now we're in Nairobi. I love it. I really love it and I enjoy it <clears throat> and loving it. <clears throat> Yet I'm coming to a even more clearer and clearer understanding. And this may not fit too well with many of our Pan-African family or those who are looking in this way as being the ultimate in destination <clears throat> it could be it could be an ultimate in the final destination and work well for us collectively as diasporas but the the awakening and the enlightenment for me is that you know we're in a dispensation of time where really there's really no nation no country really in truth that's going to fully completely satisfy what it is that we are yearning and calling for and we, for those who are students of scriptures, but, but be it biblical or Quranic, or those who are just in tune with time, <clears throat> understanding that the only thing that's going to be of a complete fulfillment and satisfaction for us as a people, and just people in general, is <clears throat> an ultimate, the ultimate kingdom of of heaven, kingdom of God, kingdom of rights, whatever, any, however you term it. We'll go as far as we can. We'll find the best that works for us for the time, tempor temporal satisfaction. Yet we are moving towards something, I believe. <clears throat> We're moving towards something that the only thing that's going to completely fulfill us is that ultimate, is that heaven on earth kingdom or however we look at it and ultimately that's going to come first from as I said it before it's going to come from self so I'm walking this path I'm walking this journey <clears throat> not even confining myself to the fact that I'm in Africa I'm not even that's not even my thinking now oh I'm from America to Africa no I'm thinking more in terms of the kingdom of heaven Right here on earth, I'm striving to walk in that way. That to have a certain governance in my mind and in my thinking and then my outward behavior and practice and actions. And that no matter where I am, if I'm in Africa, if I'm in America, if I'm, I don't care, I don't know, in Alaska, in Antarctica, <laughs> I'm still holding that, that peace. Because I'm no longer, I'm really, I'm, I'm think I'm a, I'm a bit past that looking for something to, from an outside of myself, looking for a hope in a external environment, I guess to put it that way, to determine how I live, my way of living. My peace is my responsibility. That's my responsibility. And so I can't look for things to attach myself to things. I can't attach myself to even a geographical location. I got to acquire that peace. And I believe that I am. And no matter where I am. So I give myself with the help of the most high freedom, justice and equality. And having that, I have peace. So, you know, that's my thing. And I think Ramadan comes very timely in that that i'm able to really hone in and zero in and really uh appreciate you know what where i'm being led and this walk that i'm being taken on i don't know i i'll be trying to, i don't be trying to really be deep or nothing but this is just this is just my my reality right now it's just my i, I don't really you know this is just my reality and I really, honestly, I can't even really think too much outside of that. Like right now, when I say right now, I'm not talking about this very moment. I'm just talking about in my present experience. So anything that I'm experiencing, I'm looking for the best of it. If skating, if it's bowling, if it's walking down the street, looking at the sun, all of that. So I think, I think really, because based on our previous conversations of different turn of events, you know the girls they're <clears throat> they're doing their uh, their homeschool. Well, I don't know what you call it. Their gathering mm -hmm. of, of different individuals, and 
what was presented was uh, a particular instance, occurrence, as it relates to the girl, and, you know, relating to spirituality, mm -hmm. religion in a sense, and it kind of took both of us aback, and I think it struck a chord with you in a way that you... You know, a, a lot of us, we leave, or, you know, a lot of us put our children in homeschool, mm -hmm. even in the States, mm -hmm. to maybe <clears throat> particularly not have to have certain things thrown on them, mm -hmm. pushed in their face, mm -hmm. um, religion, sexuality, mm -hmm. uh, be, be bullies, mm -hmm. being, you know, all kinds of type of negative things that parents don't want around their children. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so coming to Africa, coming to the continent, it's like, okay, cool. We won't have to worry about certain things. Mm -hmm. Thinking, you're, um, I'll just be honest with you. When, when we first came, when we first came to Rwanda, I was completely confused because they celebrated Christmas. And I'm like, what? I mean, not major, major, but they had the lights and the white Santas and, and you know, certain things like that of that nature. And I was confused, like, really? What? And keep in mind, when you talk to them about the religion or, or certain holidays, they don't really understand the origin or know where it came from. They just know that the parishioners taught them this. Mm -hmm. So coming to Kenya, no, <laughs> Kenya do the holidays big. Like, you would not, you would think that you were, I promise you, somewhere in the city, or somewhere that you, rec somewhere that you know. Mm -hmm. The lights, beautiful lights, um, music in the malls, like the malls, candy lands, I mean, mm -hmm. even in Mombasa, you know, even in everywhere. Everywhere. <clears throat> it's it, Valentine's Day, they, I'm looking at Valentine's Wonderlands going on major major with the European holidays and I'm like what is this I'm so confused so we entered the children into a homeschool program just you know a couple just a day a week where they get to actually go to a location and there's other homeschool children <clears throat> there and they love it it's it's great it's a break especially when you're being taught at home and you're tired of looking at computers every day um, it's a break for the parents. It feels so good for y'all to be out the house. Mm -hmm. But when they come home concerned because they're being forced to learn, not not that it's a bad thing to learn about a particular religion because we want them to be, they want, we want them to have full knowledge of all religions and respect all religions. But in the conversation, they're saying, well, if they question what they're being taught or if they say something the opposite of what their the person is teaching them, then they almost feel like they're being targeted or being forced to acknowledge that this is the the religion and just deal with it. So of course we weren't just dealing with it and I had to take a different approach, but it kind of bothered me that this even had to come up because it wasn't in the curriculum, it wasn't no information that was sent to the Muhammads. I would think something like this should be, okay, you, see, you hear the name, you know they're Muslim, but they must know that we're going to teach Christianity only here. So it kind of raised a flag like, what is going on? And is this the effect of colonization so deep that you think that you have to put in other children's minds who they're supposed to serve, who their God is, because this was done to you. And it, it just bothered me because now I feel like I've already reached out. And if it's not corrected, do we just have the child stay out of that class? Do we pull them out altogether? Like this is I didn't feel like going through that process. So when we're thinking about religion and that this is what's going on in my mind now, like, 
some things I didn't think that I would deal with on this journey. We, the journey is happening because of the crap we, we, didn't, we wanted to come away from. So to have to deal with some of the same things kind of just uh, struck struck a bone this struck week. Struck a chord. Struck a chord this week. Uh, you know what? Well, <clears throat> I mean, that's really interesting. I mean, I, I, it, it, it tugged at me. But in, I think maybe in a little different way. Um, but that's a whole different direction of, of conversation. Yet I think that it gave uh, a bit of confirmation in, in a sense for me, you know, where there's a lot of different divisions. I guess that's the best way I can put it, meaning things that, you know, create or cause the division between people. Politics, we know. Religion, we know, right? Mm-hmm. And it's it's like when when it has become time out for that, right? My reaction, internal reaction to that, when it was presented, was <clears throat> just seek the truth, just find the truth of whatever it is. Don't concern yourself. This is re- relating to the, the, the children, the girls. <clears throat> don't concern yourself too much. I know it affects you, but don't concern yourself too much with the passion or the imposition, if you will, from whomever is conducting the course. You find whatever is true and works for you. A person, that's that's the, that's them. No one can control you other than what you allow them to control. If you're solid in what you believe, and you're solid in what you know and how you choose to serve and practice your spirituality, stand on it. No one can knock you off your square, but always try to find what is true. Anything that you find is true, now what you can do is you can find what is common and you can build from that. But that's something that they have to learn because they're young. Right. They have to learn. They don't understand that. Well, their <clears throat> minds are still impressionable right now. Right. They're still trying to find their way. Right. right. And, and and because of that, their minds are at a very tender tender sure, point. Sure. But it's not I think it was necessary for them to experience that. Well, <clears throat> I'm glad that they brought it to our attention. I'm glad too. Um and I'm glad to hear that, you know, when they have concerns or they hear something that don't sound right, that they're not afraid to stand up for themselves. So, yeah. So, yeah. I, I do. I'm excited and happy about that. Mm-hmm. It's just, it caught me off guard. It did. Um, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> it just totally caught me off guard because I did not expect um, in a class that's targeted for worldviews that we're discussing Christianity only so it, it blew me away like that's that so that's just one of the things that I've been dealing with this this week um, trying to figure out how to get them acclimated and uh, that's it um, I don't have much <laughs> that's been you know much that I've been wrestling with I've been working hard this week and last week with the relocation services and we've been getting stuff together for the event on the 24th um, trying to get everything solidified for that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so between those two I haven't really had individual thoughts of anything other than eat sleep and the other thing mm-hmm. all right <laughs> all right well that's good it's cool <clears throat> That's good. It's cool. I mean, you know, it's a day by day. <clears throat> it's a moment by moment. There'll be periods where it's dry. That's just life, man. That's life. <laughs> you know, And but I, I, I just think just to conclude and round up, you know, our conversation, I just think that <clears throat> journeying to Africa 
for us, and may, I can speak best for myself, that I think the hype, if you will, with Africa, yeah, Africa, we hear Africa, and you know, I think it's kind of, I don't want to say it's dissipating, but I, I would say that it's more than, it's more than that. And I'm seeing more than. <clears throat> you understand? Yeah. Because I still feel that. <clears throat> For me, I feel like this is a blessing. It's an honor. I absolutely cannot believe that we are here. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that we are here. <laughs> so for me, um, I'm excited still about being here. It's, it's, it is that for those that want to come, it's everything that you're imagining and more. I mean, I'm, I'm still excited. I'm not saying I'm not excited. But do I want to see more of the world? Of course. That's, that's what I'm talking about right there. I'm, I'm but, <laughs> but you have to have a base, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that's base. one thing we're learning. We have to have a base. We have to have that place that you come back to, you come home to. And right now I feel like for me, Nairobi can definitely be the base. That's how I, much I love it. I agree with that. I, I like to think that as a home, as a, as a base, mm -hmm. Nairobi, I think Nairobi is it mm -hmm. as a base. Yeah. You know, um, but it's much, much more. Much more. It's much, much more. I want much, to, much I wanna more. find us in different parts of the world that we never thought we were at. I, I wanna. I, I love Spanish-speaking countries. I wanna learn yeah. some Spanish and all of that. Oh, there's so much I wanna yeah. see. I, I, I won't even front. There's some European countries. Oh, I, I wanna I love to go back to Italy. Italy, we love Italy. Mm -hmm. I wanna go to Istanbul. It's not. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, it's European, but you know, I wanna go to Istanbul. I want to go to the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, you know what I mean. I want to go to the UK. I want to. I want to. I want to explore myself. Mm. This is this is what I'm leading to. Mm. I'm exploring myself, mm -hmm. and I'm discovering the gifts that God has given me, or trying to discover that. Why settle? Why do we think that we gotta like settle on? Okay. Mm -hmm. Why do we think that? And they get comfortable. I mean, it's not wrong with being comfortable, but understanding that when you say we have options, that doesn't mean you have to choose one over the other and be done. No, right. it don't have to be like that. Right. Most people that I talk to that's coming to the continent understands that you're coming to lay your foundation and then they want to go see the world. They want to travel. Just get it. Just get it. It's much easier to get to other places once you're on a continent. Right, 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 right. Much, much easier, way less expensive, shorter rides, right. shorter flights. Right. Um, so it's much, much easier. And once we realize that. Yeah, that's the part. So that's what I'm excited about. I'm looking forward to I'm, I'm looking forward <laughs> to getting really settled right here in Nairobi. So we can be like, all right, we coming live broadcasting from Istanbul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the residents yeah, to go there so bad. <laughs> oh, Qatar, Oman. Mm -hmm. well, Thailand. Thailand. Indonesia. Indonesia. Wherever yeah. the case wherever. We, we just forget South Africa. I mean, you know what I mean? South Africa. <laughs> or just, even in Ghana. I want to go or, snow tubing on the continent. We hit the other other countries on the continent, sure enough. Why we never want to go to West Africa? We never say, we never mention West Africa. I want to go to Senegal. Mm, well, when Sister Amanda go, Sister Sharifa go, we'll yeah. go I'm going to go, I'm going to go, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Anyway, so, okay, that's what it is. Um, I mean, it's a little different. It's more personal in that sense, you know, um. It wasn't so much about our, I guess it's about our experience in Africa, because we're in Africa, and you know, what we're discovering Just itself. Our mind mumbling for the week. Yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you so very much. You already know, we appreciate you. We thank you for tuning in. We're grateful for allowing us to be a bit vulnerable with you. Hopefully, it's something good, something good. And if it is, please go ahead, hit the like button. And even if you want to continue on with us in this journey, subscribe. We would love to have your subscription. Until next time, peace and blessings.